What's up guys and gals? Today we're going to work on a PIN 704Z, 704Z. Show you to break it down, service it, and reassemble it with some tips and tricks along the way. Uh, I think the first thing I'm going to show you guys is just the rotor play or slop that we have on this. Hold that handle down. You can see we have a lot of play there. I'm going to show you where that comes from and then I'm going to get into breaking the reel down and showing you how to service it. So I'm going to open these three screws up. I'll pull this off so we can expose the inner workings there and eh, that's not that bad I don't like it that much but you know it's not terrible anyhow so rotor play can sometimes come from the meshing of the main gear with the pinion gear and you'll see right here that main I'm sorry the pinion gear has quite a bit of play and it's just either wear on the main or the pinion usually it's the main because the main is a softer kind of gear but can be a combo of both as well but that's where you're getting the slop from. It's not coming from anything else, it's not coming from the rotor nut, none of that stuff. Now since we have this open, we're gonna go ahead and just uh, work with it like this. I'm gonna pop the handle off first. Note when you remove this handle, there's also a washer under there. Don't lose that, it is necessary. I'll try to break that down in a little bit. And then you see that came up, but let's say it was still on there. We're going to remove this screw. And now we can pull this entire thing up. Got that on one sec. Now this comes out. It's just pretty nasty, sorry. <laughs> and you can push that main gear out. I just pushed it from the handle side. You can push it up and pull it out like that. All right, so now to get that pinion out, we're gonna remove that nut. like so. Kind of rock as you pull it up. And we'll get there in a sec to under this good stuff as well because there's some stuff we can work on there. I'm going to pull this straight up. If we can get it up. We do want to be a little bit careful with these because the parts for this are getting more and more difficult to find. So we don't want to go crazy and pop it off. So we we'll just go kind of gentle. And the reason you do it or need to do it is because of the screws that we're going to have underneath there. Now we have those three screws under there. One thing you can take note of is that little raise or that bar there is facing toward the arm or real foot. So when you put it back on, you know where it came from or know where it goes back to. Now you see I'm undoing those three screws on the outside. All right, up that comes. Put that there. And you should be able to just pull this out. Hopefully you're not stuck or something. That comes up, stick that there. I'm just checking the bearing see how it feels. And all we have left here is just this lever with the um, dog engage disengage mechanism. To undo that, we're going to work on the back side first. Undo this screw here. That'll just kind of pop off like that. Now, all we're going to do is just push that back side of it, push it up. That kind of gets everything started. You can work, you can work under here, pull that up. Notice there was a little jump of that dog. There's a little spring under here. I'll show you how to put that back in when we're done. And I'm just gonna pull this up. Just gently. And now we can remove that spring that you see there. And we are pretty much done with this. Now for the main gear, you have this piece on top which you just kind of just pull off. And there we go. Like that. And you also have these two pieces under here. You have the ratchet, then you have this bushing underneath there. I'll try to get them off. If they don't come off, I'm just gonna leave them alone. I don't want to mess the thing up, so. So take an X-Acto knife. Run it under there. If I can get it. 
and just kind of work it up like so. Notice that it's keyed and it's keyed to these shoulders that are, that are on top of the shaft for the main gear. Now this is supposed to be able to just come up as well. Sometimes these things just get stuck which is why I'm saying that. Note the orientation of it. If you're looking at it this way, the gears are going in this direction, the teeth will be going in this direction. So just kind of opposite. Now for the spool, all we're going to do is remove, uh, I'm kind of putting a little bit of pressure on top of the shaft on the bottom so it doesn't turn. I'm going to move the drag knob, pull that out. You notice you have a thrust washer under there or on top of it. To remove the drag washers, we're going to stick a screwdriver inside the little ring that's inside, push in and up. And you can just kind of pop those things out. Whatever the stack is, is, is kind of what you can stay using or replace them. Notice you have a Teflon wash on the bottom and you have two HT100s above it. These look like they need to be changed out, so we'll do that. So I'll show you how to take, how to take care of that stuff as well. And the last thing would be this keyed washer that's right there. I'm sorry, the, uh, the octagonal washer that's right there. All right, so one of the final steps will be to break down the rotor and the bale assembly. We're gonna do one screw first. Then the next. And we're going to have things spring out on us a little bit here when we do this. So we'll start over here with the bumper side. I'm going to kind of keep my finger over or, or depressing the bale wire. Pull that out. Now I'm going to just let that up and note that that spring is going to slip up because that's what it's supposed to do. And there's that one. Let's keep these separate. And this one, we just kind of pull it off. And it'll still spring as well because there's one under there, but not as bad as the first. I'm pulling that down to get it out, like so. Now, the one thing you can note here is that the spring on this side, which goes under that trigger right there, is a little more compact than the one on this side. This one feels a little tighter. Than this one but they are different so you have to take note of that and just kind of remember where they came from so you don't mix them up so I just kind of lay them out like that I know my setup is looking like this and we obviously know this side will be going over here because it has a little gap or groove right there that will receive that so since we're here let's go ahead and remove the bill the line roller excuse me we're just gonna do this nut There's not too many pieces under here. So I'll screw that, lift that up, and now what you have remaining is the line roller, which can go either way, and that bushing. May or may not need to be replaced. I'll test it out afterwards and see. And here comes the juicy part that people, this is just the rotor washer that came off of there juicy part that can be tricky putting back in. Uh, it shouldn't be because it's not that difficult, but, but everything is difficult if you're doing it for the first time. So I'm going to do these two screws here and I will keep these screws separate also. You'll notice that that, um, that bar is kind of riding up on you when you start taking these screws out because there's a spring mechanism under there. That you have to worry about. Now we can pull this bar up like so. These can actually be separated when you get this pin out of here like that. Pull those apart and notice that that's the setup. It has like a thinner longer part over here and that thicker or nubbier part will be facing out to engage with this piece like so. Then you have the spring that I was telling you about earlier that was forcing it up. Last thing we can do here is the handle and that's pretty simple. You just undo this, stick a screwdriver inside here. Sometimes it comes out, sometimes it does not. If it doesn't come out, don't worry about it. This one looks like it will not be coming out. So we're just gonna leave it alone. But you can certainly open this all the way up so you can rotate this 
and then still kind of clean under there as you go. All right, so to clean this stuff up, what we're gonna do is use paper towels, uh, quite a few Q-tips. I may even use an ultrasonic cleaner on this one uh, because of some of the pieces. I'll find out as I go. If you did use an ultrasonic cleaner, I would recommend using nothing more uh, abrasive than Dawn dish liquid mixed with water, but you can certainly use the purple cleaner or the green cleaner, whatever you guys like. Uh, also be using toothbrush, kind of scrub some things out. I will definitely be, well, not definitely, but I will be using a wire brush as well to get some of these uh, nooks and crannies that have some stiff grease in there. And to break down that heavy or dried up grease, I will be using a Corrosion X. You can use WD-40 if you wanted to. Uh, I just prefer Corrosion X. So let me get this cleaned up, come back to you guys and show you how to put all this stuff back together. Welcome back. Let's start with the dog first, but before we get there, we're gonna add a couple of things along the way. Uh, first, we're going to add some oil to these three holes to receive the side cover. I'm using Speedex, but I normally use Real X, which looks like this, same company. I'm just gonna stick some oil inside each one of these holes. I've been using oil lately versus using grease inside there. I'm gonna take some grease and stick it inside that channel right there. That's for the main gear. And I'm using pen real grease for that. Let's show you what that looks like. That. And I didn't take out the liner and we're still not gonna take it out. I'm just gonna add some grease inside that hole right there. Uh, maybe some along there and some in this general area right here. There's one other thing I didn't take out, which was the bumper for the bale. I'll show you how to do that because we have to replace that anyhow. First thing we're gonna do here is take this, stick it under that bronze piece that you see there. So we're just gonna kinda get it started here and then work it around underneath there. Kinda like that. Now you have to work that end piece inside that little corner right there. So we're gonna turn it we're gonna push it down and in, or in and down. And that's how it'll look. We're gonna leave that alone for now. And now we're gonna take this eccentric, add some grease around it. And add some grease to that hole right there. And we can add some grease to inside here as well. And around the dog. These are just light coats. You don't need to grease, grease the eccentric, I'm sorry, the uh, spring. And now all we're gonna do is take this one end, stick it through the hole, looking like that. Now we're gonna take this eccentric, just stick it through the hole, push it down, like so. And now we're gonna work this spring into that little cranny or nook right there turn that to be able to get some room to push that inside so it'll be looking like that now I'm going to push down on this flip it over turn this this side looking like that and we're going to act like it's a pen senator rotate that until it balances which is about we lost it somewhere around there, flip it over, and then secure it with a screw. Now we'll go ahead and snug this down, test it to make sure it works, and it does. We're gonna put this in that position right there like that. Now we can stick the dog in, it'll be looking like that. We're gonna take this end, the flat side right there, hit it against that raised end of the spring. We're gonna push it without, without lowering the dog so far push it and then you can push the dog over to the post because you want to make sure that it's on this side of the point there. So that's how I'll be looking. Just takes a little playing with, you just gotta hit that side, push it, rotate it to where this is on this piece right here, the silver piece is on this side of the gold post and then you can push that down to set it. Now before we move on, we're gonna remove that bumper I'm gonna take one of my thin screwdrivers, just kind of get that started. And I just popped it out. 
Let me grab that really quickly. So we just essentially snapped it off. And now we're going to push the remaining piece of it out. We can just go from the side. Kind of like that. And now we're going to get a replacement bumper. But before we do that, we're going to pop this one out. And it took a little bit of effort, but there it is. And it's nice and empty now. We can stick another bumper inside there. Now for the bumper, all we're going to do is take that end piece, the thinner end, and just kind of push it through. Just like so. Once we did that, we're going to take it and stick it through from that side. And that's pretty much it. Push it as far down as you can because you want to make sure it's all the way in there. So the first thing we're doing on this side would be the spring or that trip arm that's right there. Uh, I added some grease to the two holes where the screws will go and a little bit of, a little bit of grease also where that spring is going to sit. So I'm going to take this spring, just kind of set it on top of that little post or tab that's on there. So it'll look like that. Take my pin, stick it through, and the setup will be looking like that. You notice that little bump right there? That little bump will be resting over the spring to kind of help support this. Now we're going to take this, it'll be looking like this. Just kind of push it down to where it locks in place. And that's the setup. Now all I'm going to do is take this, stick it through, make sure I get that post or that little bump right there inside of the spring. Then we'll have it lined up. And that's right there. Now this is only a little tricky in the sense that you can't get, it's hard to get the screws in or through the holes, but it's not that difficult. Now when everything is set up, I'm gonna push down on this and screw this in. Now we can let everything go because one screw is in there. Turn this around and put the other one in. And we test it to make sure it's working. And it is. Let's go ahead and snug these down a little bit. And let's go ahead and add some grease right here. That's where that washer is going to go. Some inside that hole and a little bit right around there. All right, now let's go ahead and do the bale assembly. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change the bale spring on this side. It's just called the secondary bale spring. Uh, because that one felt a little, little loose. Didn't feel perfect. Uh, before we start, I'm going to add some grease to inside these holes right here. That's where the screws or support screws will go. So one there and one over here. And there's no real trick to this. Uh, you just kind of got to use a little bit of effort to kind of get this in there. And what we'll do here to kind of line things up is start with this side first, which is the more difficult of the two parts to put together. But it'll help you get everything situated once you put this one in. So I'm going to turn around to some because I'm right handed put some, take the spring, have that point that's aiming down, rest it in looking like that, just like so. So before I get started, I'm going to add a little bit of grease to right here. That's for where it goes inside the hole on this bail arm. Take it, having it looking like this, get inside that hole. There's the hole. And now we're going to take this, work this around like so. And I'm going to push up, rest it on the table, push up after you get over to this side where it's on this side of the bumper, looking like that. Then we're just going to screw it in. But you have to hold it pretty securely. There's no other way around it.
So there is some force needed to do this one. Snug it down. Just test it out to make sure it works properly, which it does, as we can see. And now for this side, we'll do the same scenario, same thing. The point facing down will be going inside that little channel right there. I'm taking the back side, pushing it down so that I can fit this in like so. Can let it go for a second. And now essentially you're going to have this looking like this. So whatever situation you have over here needs to be set up so that this can fit in this position. And the way we're going to do that is just with this side. Push down on it. Let's add some grease to the tip of this as well. Find a hole for it. And just kind of push down on it and screw that in. And what you're trying to do is have that situation where it looks like that. And you can empty it by doing that. Now we go ahead and add a little bit of grease to right there. Some around here. Some on the screw or the threads. And we're going to take this, stick this on like that. A little bit of grease around it some inside the line roller. Just get that on there. Stick this through. And then secure with this nut. Looks good. And now we're going to test this to make sure that it works properly. That looks a lot better. It was a little bit loose before with that older spring where you weren't getting a tight enough grip or flex on this side. Flip it over, test it out. Do not put your fingers here. Take them away and now you can press the button. It's a very tight, snappy kind of bail spring, which is what we're looking for. The reason you don't do that is because I will slap on the back of your hand and really, really hurt. All right, let's go ahead and do the spool on the drag washers. I'm replacing the drag washers because they were a little bit off. Uh, I'm going to start with just dropping one of these in here, just like so. And then that Teflon washer, uh, in theory, the thicker one is the one that goes down next. Uh, I prefer it at the top, but we're going to use the thicker keyed washer. Then we'll stick one of these in. And before we do that, we're going to add some drag grease to it. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second after I do both of them. This is what I'm using for the drags. Drop one of these in. Then you have the octagonal washer, last HT100. And then you have the last keyed washer. Take one end of this, stick it down inside the groove that, is, that you see inside there. Start on one end and then just kind of work your finger around to get it in. When it's in there, you want to make sure that it's in the groove. So just double check it to make sure. Flip this over. We're going to add some oil to right here. And just kind of work that in. All right, now let's go ahead and grease up a couple places here. Uh, one being inside right there. That's kind of where the bearing sits. Uh, you can add oil there or you can add grease. I'm going to add oil. And then we're going to grease these up. Uh, just for here, we're going to grease right there. That's kind of where it interacts with that arm. A little bit of grease on the bottom. Some on top right there. And for these, we're going to put a light amount of grease. <laughs> I like to grease the threads. And the same kind of thing for the main gear. Get 
can do a little bit on the outside of the ratchet. And remember what I said about the ratchet is that it is the opposite of the gears. So if it's looking like this, the ratchet will be going facing like this. Just make sure it goes all the way down over that shoulder, like so. And then we can stick this bushing on there. Make sure you rotate until it falls in place also because it needs to seat properly. Last thing we can do here is grease this arm. Make sure you grease inside there and also inside here. Now we're going to take our gear and drop that in like so. You want to make sure this is in a disengaged position so there's room for this to drop all the way down. If you didn't have that, what would happen is sometimes that dog would stop it from going all the way down, which is doing right now. But if I do that, then it just goes straight all the way down. Now before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and work on the handle. And the reason being is because I want to secure that main gear so it doesn't slip back and forth. So all I'm going to do here is just either add some oil or some grease to inside here. Since we can't separate it, it's probably easier to put some oil inside there. And then also some here on the threads. And we just kind of work that down, make sure it's working properly. Flip it on the outside to make sure we're in the right position. And then we're good to go with that. You can add a little bit of grease inside here. Some oil right here. And some right there. And then just kind of work that in. Now we can take our, hold on to this, take our washer, stick that on there and then secure our handle to it. I'm still holding on to the main gear. Now you're not gonna go too far down, but you will go far enough down where it can't come out. Now we're gonna take our pinion gear, drop that in. Now you have to turn it as you go down so it interacts with the main gear. Take this piece, add some grease to it, like so. Pop that on over that post right there without the blue part. And now we're going to go ahead and add some oil to the bearing. We're going to go ahead and work that in. That feels good. Drop that in over here, just like that. Now we're going to take this. We can certainly grease this up as well. It just helps add a layer of protection to it. You can grease right there where it's used for the bail trip. And as I said before, don't forget that it's going to go looking like this where that raise or ramp is against the foot. Then we're secure with the screws. Go ahead and snug them all down. Now we can take our bumper, stick that back up on there. Notice there's three posts, there's three receiving holes on the bottom. Just kind of line it up and then put it, push it down. And you're good. Now we're going to take our rotor, stick that on there, just like so. Get our washer, drop that on. It's keyed so you'll have to rotate until it falls in place, but you also need to rotate the rotor until it falls and seats inside the rotor. And I just pushed up a little bit on the pinion gear to kind of help lift that, uh, that pinion gear up so I can put this on. Now we go ahead and snug this down. And now we can stick our shaft in there to about right there, I'm going to put this on like this, move that over to as far or away or closer or away as you need to get that shaft through. Make sure you get that shaft down to where the holes line up like right there. And then we take this, stick it through and secure it. And we'll snug this down also. 
That looks good. All we're gonna do now is cover this up and secure it with the three screws. Go ahead and lightly snug these down. We can take this, stick it on over there. Get our spool on there. And we're gonna test this out. First we'll do the drag. Yep, that's nice and tight. Crank. Feels good. With the drag on there, I'm sorry, with the dog on there. Feels good as well. Bail flip, the last thing we'll check. And that works well as well. Alright guys, if you found the video useful, please hit the thumbs up button. If you appreciate content like this, consider subscribing to the channel and spreading the word. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again for watching.